if you would raise your hand and we'll get to questions and please introduce yourself to him before you ask a question. We'll start with Nick Roush. Hey Jamal, Nick Roush from Kentucky Sports Radio. Um, you were with the Cincinnati Bengals. It's a pretty, pretty nice gig. What was so appealing about uh, Kentucky's running backs room to, to come down to Lexington? You know, obviously some of the connections that I had down here, you know, Brad White is a guy that I, I respect and have worked with in the past and uh, know that, that what he's been doing down here. And uh, two years ago, I came down to a pro day. I think uh, Snell was working out at that pro day, came down and worked him out. And I remember walking through these facilities and, basically really didn't realize Kentucky had what they had going on here. So there's just a lot of really good things that, uh, that made me want to come down here. It's going to be the easiest move I've ever made in coaching, which uh, obviously is a bonus for that. But, you know, just talking with Stoops and, and what he's got going on down here, it was definitely something that I wanted to come be a part of. I'm curious too, with the kind of coaching trees, Liam Cohen comes from McVay and so did Zach Taylor. How, how much similarities is there going to be in, and terminology from what you came from to, to now? Well, I mean, I, I think there'll be some similarities, of course, with, with different terms that are used, but then there's also going to be adjustments that are made to each system. You know, we made adjustments at Cincinnati. There'll be adjustments that are made here, but just the basic concept and some of the schemes that, that we'll be doing is, is definitely there's going to be some similarities. So that, that part obviously was intriguing as well, uh, understanding the system, kind of knowing what, what the system was going to be installed down here definitely helps to kind of have some background in that already. Hey, Coach, John Hale with the Courier Journal in Louisville. Uh, I'm curious, obviously, you have the, the uh, special teams coordinator experience in the SEC at Arkansas. Just in general, kind of what's your special teams philosophy and, and that part of this job, what are you looking forward to? You know, I think the first think step that you always take is really assessing the personnel that you have and it allows you to do certain things you know being a special teams coordinator in the SEC is fun but also all my stops in the NFL have always been kind of involved uh, with that whether it's the returners whether it's just different aspects of the special teams it's just something that I've I've really enjoyed being a part of in the past and and just excited to be able to continue to do that here you know specifically schematically what we'll do I mean that's that would be kind of when we get through with those evaluations and and process of kind of what we have on already here in the system, what we've got coming in. I mean, obviously we're losing a, a really good punter that was pretty impressive to watch. I think what he did in the bowl game is still one of the top highlights um, of bowl game, we'll be able to step aside from that and avoid a block. But uh, there'll be some things that we do. Obviously there's some very good schematic things that have been done here already. And obviously want to build on those and continue those things going as well. Hey, sorry about that. Uh, I'm Josh Moore with Herald Leader. When you, uh, you come here, I, I don't know how familiar are you with the guys that you're going to be inheriting in the, in the running back room? And, and, and what do you, you know, look for in a guy um, as far as, you know, the, the, the traits you, you like in a running back? Well, yeah, obviously, I, I know the guys that were in the room, got a chance to watch them play in, in a bowl game and, and some other games as well. I mean, that that was an intriguing part of it was knowing that the room is pretty solid. I've been fortunate in my career to to be in some pretty good running back rooms, both in college and the NFL. And and seeing the traits that this room has here was was exciting. And, and I can't really can't wait to work with these guys. You know, as for what I look for in a running back, that's probably one of the, the things that I love the most about this position is it comes in so many different sizes and shapes. I don't care if you're five, nine, I don't care if you're six, one, you can be an effective running back and be very explosive and do a lot of those things. I mean, just in my career alone, you look at just my last stop, you know, you got Joe Mixon, who's a six footer, big, strong guy. And, and then there's Gio Bernard that's right behind him. And he's a smaller scattier type back. So it really, a lot of it just depends on that type of player. There's some specific skill sets that I look for. For me, short area quickness is huge. I think being able to make a guy miss, whether it's run him over or shake him is extremely important. It's how do you get those extra yards on a carry? And, and those things are based people. So if you say, hey, well, what height do you look for? What's I don't look for any of that. I look for football ability, football movement. And there isn't one specific trait that I think 
strength lends itself to success than another. Uh, good example. I, I like to lose a, you know, Clyde Edwards, a that got drafted in first round to the Kansas city chiefs. If you wanted to base it off of his 40 time, you probably don't touch him. He ran, I think a four, six plus um, 40 time, but he can make a guy miss in a phone booth. And I think that's the part is how do you make guys miss? And do you have a skill to do that? And it can come in a lot of different sizes and shapes. Jamal, Derek Terry from the Cats Paws. Um, obviously, you spent many years as a college coach, so you're familiar with recruiting. But I was curious now, with your NFL experience, how do you kind of plan to incorporate that into when you're recruiting kids? Well, I'm a better recruiter by trait now. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is a lot of these young men, that's what they aspire to do. They aspire to go to the NFL. And now I have that, that understanding and that knowledge of the entire process. You know, I've sat in the, the draft room. I've sat in the official, you know, interview rooms with guys. I've sat at the train station and talked to them. I've been on the field during the drills. I've worked the drills at the combine multiple times. So I've, I know all those steps in this process. I also know some of the things success-wise you have to have in order to, to gain that success. So I think it's just helped me in recruiting a lot more, just builds on kind of the type of recruiter I am that now I have this whole an, another part of recruiting known that maybe some other position coaches don't. Coach, I'm just glad as old as I am. I, I'm Larry Bout, by the way, with Wells Views. To know that there's a coach that knows what a phone booth still is. So I was impressed <laughs> by that right away. So, but, but, but just tell me a little bit about, do you have any past relationship with, with Liam? Do you know him very well? Did you talk to him a lot before you took this job? Um, yeah, we, we don't. Our paths haven't crossed. Now, we've worked with some common people. I mean, obviously, where I was last year with, uh, with Zach and you no know, saying he worked with Liam and then our assistant online coaches had known him from from main days. But no, I didn't have a, a whole lot of, you know, our paths has never really crossed. Now, we've talked, obviously, before uh, this actually transpired and kind of got our thoughts together and just kind of getting a feel to see if we can definitely mesh. And I feel that we will. Obviously, schematically, there's some common ground there that, that becomes very important when you're talking about installing a new offense. It's, you know, maybe one less guy that, that has to learn the system in that regard. But not, not a lot. Just I'm really excited to work with them. You know, I hope it's later than sooner, if I'm being honest. Let him make a good run there in the playoffs and, and then he'll get here as soon as he can but just really excited to be able to work with him as we get moving along Nick Gabriel. Uh, hi coach Nick Gabriel UK radio network uh, welcome uh, you refer to what Mark Stoops has going on here could you be a little more specific as to what you may have noticed in your interactions from the NFL with UK yeah. And I think it goes even further back than that. You know, I was a position coach at Oklahoma state coaching running backs there when, uh, Mark kind of got the job. And I just remember looking at what he started doing recruiting wise and just some of the social media aspect. And this, this is years ago. Now we're talking the 2011 kind of time frame where I was at o Oklahoma state kind of moving on. So it was early in the whole social media outlook. And I saw him doing some things in that, that really stuck out to me even that far away and then come down on the pro day and, and seeing the amount of players that, you know, were definitely NFL talent that he had kind of built together and put together. And you, you don't get that done if you aren't recruiting well you aren't coaching well and you aren't doing things in the building and you looked around at the facilities and and that's one of the good things I've traveled all over to different campuses to different pro days so I've been through a lot of college campuses throughout the past few years in the NFL and you know I was kind of blown away by what's going on here I, I guess if I'm being honest I didn't know much about Kentucky football at that time and I definitely my eyes were open at that point so when you look at those things whether that the administration is doing providing providing the facilities for the players, providing the outlets for them on social media, the recruiting aspect of it. I mean, and then you talk about the wins. I mean, the things that he's been able to do since he's been here has been awesome. And I think being up the road, um, I actually live in Northern Kentucky. I'm hearing a lot more about Kentucky football. Just, just made, it just intrigued me even more. John Wong. Hey, Jamal, John Wong, NOLA Media, just the cats.com. I look over your resume and it's pretty impressive when you consider that most of the guys, when they made it to the NFL as a coach, that's kind of the pinnacle. So from a personal standpoint, what, what did you want to accomplish by maybe stepping back to Kentucky and what was it about Kentucky that, that really, really uh, uh, got your attention? 
Yeah, you know, I've a, if I'm being honest, I'm a, I'm a college coach at heart. I mean, that there's a part of coaching college football that really appeals to me, the, the recruiting process, the helping a young man develop, not only as a football player, but as a person, meeting families and, and those type of things. So deep down, that's always been something that I love and I enjoy. And really, my opportunity to go to the NFL was taking part to be able to become a better college coach, a more productive college coach, and, and really spend a little bit more time on the football and the X's and O's aspects of it. And, and then now come back and do that piece. But you mentioned, you know, kind of what brought me to Kentucky was, was the, just the opportunity here. Um, Kentucky, my family has fallen in love with Kentucky. And you got to understand, I've lived everywhere in the world. I was born in Turkey. My mother was British. I lived in England for about 10 years, lived in Germany, spent some time in Italy, lived in Texas. I bounced around a bunch of places and Kentucky hit us. Now my wife and daughter are big into horses. So obviously that's a, a big factor in it, but you know, just the state of Kentucky in itself was amazing. And then, as I mentioned before, I came down here to a pro day two years ago and was just amazed. And, and the fact that Brad White was here, you know, we worked together with the Indianapolis Colts and actually back in my alma mater at the academy to start and just listening to him talk and the structure of things it was like man they got it going on down there and when when this opportunity presented itself it it really gave me say hey I think maybe it's time to get back into college ball and and do something that deep down you truly love Nick Ross well when you when you do google your name you'll you'll see some stats from back in the day at Air Force <laughs> y'all y'all won quite a few ball games but uh <laughs> I'm curious, just moving everywhere, your experience with the military, your upbringing, can you just elaborate on that and how it kind of incorporates into, into how you coach? Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I think when you look at the environment that I grew up in and I'm talking just, just at home, I just think that it's such a unique dynamic that I grew up. So my father, um, African-American man from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, down in the South. And then there's my mom, this posh British lady from England. And, and you just talk about the dynamic in that itself. And then you start adding my moving around and all that. I really just, I had to learn how to make friends quickly. And I, I think that that happens for, for military brats, as we call ourselves, as you move around, you learn that, okay, about three years, you're moving and you're going to a new school and you're going to be in a new place. And, you know, I, I loved it. Some of the places that I've seen and I've got to, to view in person as a kid growing up, it was unbelievable. Um, and I think really that's kind of helped me is because players from a lot of different walks of life, well, I've, I've experienced a lot of different things. And I think it just allows me to connect to each player individually on a different level, no matter what their background, no matter what their upbringing. I just really feel it kind of has given me that opportunity to communicate with those guys and build those relationships. But obviously the foundation of the military life of traveling and moving and the foundation of my home and, and truly by no, not really by anything that I did, but just that in, that environment that I was able to grow up in is, I think, lend itself for me to be an effective football coach. John Hale. Hey, coach, do you have a specific kind of recruiting area you like to focus on in your career? Is it positionally? Is it geographically? Just kind of where have you been at there? You know, I think every, everywhere you go, there's different systems. I've position recruited. I've area recruited. Uh, I've done a mix of both in my in your years coaching. Obviously, uh, starting at the Air Force Academy, you're a national program. You have to recruit the entire nation in order to get the amount of viable candidates you need that can get into school academically, let alone capable of playing Division One football. So I, I, I like the process. I, I think at the end of the day, I don't care where you recruit. I don't care how you recruit. It will always be about the relationships you make from the family, from the young man, from the high school, from the counselor, from anybody that touches that young man's life. It's part of it. So you throw me in South Dakota. I'm going to recruit South Dakota. You can throw me in California. I can recruit California. And again, at the end of the day, it's really about building relationships. Josh Moore. Hey again, Jamal. The, the, with the, with the, um, Special teams piece, is that, I guess, what do you, as a special teams coordinator, what do, how do you look at that part of the job? Because it seems like, especially in the NFL and even now increasingly in college, you know, you, you got your, your punt game, but the, the return part of it is kind of, it seems like that's a really tough thing to, to, to get, you know, you'd sort of like you just have to take advantage of things more so than, than create you know, some, some plays there. How do you just envision that piece of it looking? 
Well, I mean, the return game is always going to come down to the returner. I mean, that that's, I mean, that's, that's one of the common things there. If you've got a great returner, chances are your return game's good. And it's, it's, unlike, it's not really unlike any other position group. If, if you've got a really good player, you find out different ways of how to highlight them. And, and really you highlight them with the 10 other players that you surround them with. So you look at the skills, the skill set, the install, just the basic schemes of the return game, how to block, how to be in position, the, those details that, that sometimes get overlooked, but fundamentally are so important into that return game become really huge so it's building that that system that you have it's finding a guy that's capable of doing it I don't care what level you're at returners are, are hard to find at the NFL level is you go through and you evaluate all the college players I mean punt returners are, are a different animal and I think part of that is in recruiting is having an eye for not only okay this guy's a great receiver or this guy's a great running back it's okay he's got some special teams ability as well and I think that's the biggest thing and the biggest point I hope to make to guys on the team is at the NFL. And if that's the level you want to play at, you're going to play special teams. I mean, that's that's part of it. You when you look at the number of players that are activated on game day. Well, you pretty much account for if you're the number two or the number three on any position group, you're going to find your way on one of the teams. So I think just getting those guys to buy in. You know, I've been I've been that college guy where it's like oh, I'm a starting running back. I shouldn't no, I shouldn't have to do this return game. But it's just, you know, changing that mindset and realize, you know what, this is another piece that makes me valuable not only to my current team, but potentially to who I may get to play for in the future. So it, it starts with that. It starts with your returner and, and working with those guys and helping them build the fundamentals that they need to have. And then obviously the 10 guys that you surround them with and how they do fundamentally. Okay, we'll do two more. So we'll do Jeff Drummond and Larry Voss. Jeff? Hey, Jamal, uh, Jeff Drummond from uh, Cats Illustrated. Mm -hmm. Welcome to uh, Lexington. Thank you. I was just curious, uh, some of the big news here the last week or so has been the return of some of the guys up front mm -hmm. on, on the O-line, and they've established a reputation for being big, physical, being able to move people up there. How much does that excite you with the combination of, you know, having Chris Rodriguez as one of the guys you'd be working with? Well, you know, I've played the position, obviously, and coached the position for a lot of years. One thing will never change. Those guys up front are the most important piece of the run game. No ifs, ands, buts about it. You can have some great backs that can do some really good things, but when you've got a great O line that's up in front of them, it, it, it hands down makes the run game go. So obviously, my excitement level with that, watching those guys move around and you know all the things they are able to move guys off the ball is it, huge. I mean, I'm a running back. I'm a running back at trade. That's the far. I love running the football. I love my guys having success running the football, and it all starts with those guys up front so you, you'll see me giving those guys as much love as I possibly can because I know they make this engine move final question Larry Voss hey, hey coach just wondering two things if I could how much does your media relations background help you does that mean we can call you anytime we need for information <laughs> since you're used to that and then also how do you kind of evaluate Max Duffy moving to the next level <laughs> Um, well, I guess I'll start with that first, first question there. Um, yeah, I'm a chief of media relations guy. So I've had some media and relations training, but I've been more on the training side, training other people to how to talk to the media, whether it's generals or, or different things. But I can tell you right now, Miss Susan here, I, you won't hear anything from me unless you've gone through Miss Susan. So <laughs> if, uh, I put that card away a long time ago. Um, and, and really, if I'm being honest, I, I haven't done that evaluation at all for the next level for that. So I'd be I'd be misspeaking if I was able to mention anything about that. Well, well maybe I can, it just seems like the Aussie style kickers don't fit in today's NFL or that's what I've been told. That wrong or well, it, here's here's one of the, the major differences when you look at punt teams in college versus punt teams in the NFL. The rules are different. Right. The fact that you can only have two players down the field when the ball is snapped is a huge different than where in college they can all leave at the snap. So the coverage is different. How you protect the punts is different. Um, your movement. So there's no rugby punts. There's no running and you gain that extra hang time by just running out of the pocket with the ball and then kicking it later. So um, 
that part is entirely different. And for some guys coming from college, they make, have to make that adjustment. The end of the day, though, it's can you kick the ball? What is the type of leg? And, and placement is so huge in the NFL. Uh, you have some very threatening returners back there that you're going to go into a game saying, I do not want the ball in his hands. But you also want the, ball, <laughs> the field position to be flipped. So a guy that can directionally punt, has a strong leg, that can adjust to the, okay, maybe he was a rugby punter in college. College, and now he's more of a straight, you know, pro style punter um, can happen. So at the end of the day, how he hits that ball and when he goes through the combine, how that's going to look this year will really determine that. But whether he's Aussie or not Aussie, there's Aussie, there's Aussie punters in the NFL. So from what I've seen, he's got he's an athlete and athletes make it as punter in the NFL.